Hey guys, we're finishing out Romans today. And so we'll be in Romans 15 and 16. And that will be the end. And then we'll be in Corinthians. And I love Corinthians. And also, if there's anyone in Farmersville who's watching, I found a great church called Pathway Church. It's on the road you turn off 380 to go south to jo Josephine. And it's non-denominational, and I really love it. And so if you guys are interested, feel free to come on by. Service is at 1045. And there's another one, an earlier one at like 9, I think. I didn't really check it out because that's kind of early. <laughs> okay. Romans 15, the Passion Translation. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, may your blessings of peace and love and happiness be upon everyone who watches these videos. And Lord, please help us understand the wisdom and knowledge that we retain today, Lord. Lord, today we put on our belt of truth from you our armor of righteousness from you, our boots of peace from you, our helmet of salvation from you that protects us against enemy lies, and our wraparound shield of faith from you that extinguishes enemy arrows. And Lord, we arm ourselves with your word, which is like the sharpest sword ever since it's from you and not man-made, Lord. Jesus, please help us be loving, self-disciplined, strong, courageous, and confident in you, to you, for you, by you, with you, because of you, Jesus, and to others, Lord. Remind us to be loving to each other. And Lord, thank you so much that the Bible has survived all these thousands of years to guide us and, <clears throat> and lead us to you, Lord, the path of righteousness that leads to you. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you bless us with. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you for dying on the cross for our freedom. Thank you for dying on the cross just because you loved us so much. The greatest love a person can show is when he lays down his life for his friend. And that's exactly what you did, Lord. And we thank you and worship you and give you glory for it, Lord. And thank you for giving us your Holy Spirit. We love you so much. We thank you. And we pray and ask these things in your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Okay. Romans 15. Love is the key to unity. I didn't even read the title before I prayed. Okay. Now, those who are mature in their faith or powerful in their faith can easily be recognized for they don't live to please themselves, but have learned to patiently embrace others in their immaturity. Immaturity. Or not just please themselves. Our goal must be to empower others to do what is right and good for them and to bring them into spiritual maturity. For not even the most powerful one of all, the anointed one, Jesus Christ, lived to please himself. His life fulfilled a scripture that says, All the insults of those who insulted you fall upon me. Whatever was written beforehand is meant to instruct us in how to live. The scriptures impart to us encouragement and inspiration so that we can live in hope and endure all things. Now may God, the source of great endurance and comfort, grace you with unity among yourselves, which flows from your relationship with Jesus, the Anointed One. 
or that you may value one another equally in Jesus the Messiah. Okay, I know I said it before, but Messiah, Christ, the Messiah is Hebrew, Christ is Greek, and those both mean anointed one. So whatever the Passion Translation refers to the anointed one, it's Jesus Christ or Jesus the Messiah. Then, with a unanimous rush of passion, you will, with one voice, glorify God, the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. You will bring God glory when you accept and welcome one another as partners, just as the Anointed One has fully accepted you and received you as his partner. The God of hope for Jews and non-Jews. I am convinced that Jesus the Messiah was sent as a servant to the Jewish people to fulfill the promises God made to our ancestors and to prove God's faithfulness. And now, because of Jesus, the non-Jewish people of the world can glorify God for his kindness to them, fulfilling the prophecy of Scripture. Because of this, I will proclaim you among the nations, and they will hear me sing praises to your name. And in another place it says, You who are not Jewish, celebrate life right alongside his Jewish people. And again, praise the Lord, all you who are not Jews, and let the people of the earth raise their voices and praises to him. And the notes here are all the Psalms and Deuteronomy and um, the places in the Bi earlier in the Bible. And Isaiah prophesied, an heir to David's throne will emerge and he will rise up as a ruler over all the non-Jewish nations for all their hopes will be met in him. Now may God, the fountain of hope, fill you to overflowing with uncontainable joy and perfect peace as you trust in him. And may the power of the Holy Spirit continually surround your life with this super abundance until you radiate with hope. Lord, I would like to pray this prayer over everyone who watches these videos real quick. Jesus, I pray that God you or God, the fountain of hope will fill us to overflowing with uncontainable joy and perfect peace as we trust in you. And may the power of the Holy Spirit continually surround our lives with your super abundance or with his super abundance, with your super abundance until we radiate with hope in Jesus name. Amen. Okay. I just wanted to pray that with everyone. That's, I need that too. Paul's ministry and his plans. My dear brothers and sisters, I'm fully convinced of your genuine spirituality. I know that each of you is stuffed full of God's goodness, that you are richly supplied with all kinds of revelation knowledge, and that you are empowered to effectively instruct one another. And because of the outpouring of God's grace on my life to be his minister and to preach Jesus, the anointed one, to the non-Jewish people, I have written rather boldly to you on some themes, reminding you of their importance. For this grace has made me a servant of the gospel of God, constantly doing the work of a priest. For I endeavor to present an acceptable offering to God so that the non-Jewish people of the earth may be set apart and made holy by the spirit of holiness. Now then, it is through my union with Jesus Christ that I enjoy an enthusiasm and confidence in my ministry for God. I've been having some really bad days, but today I'm just filled with the Lord's joy and super stoked and really happy. And to be honest, sometimes lately reading the Bible has felt like 
more of a chore, you know? But today, it's not like that anymore, and I'm so freaking happy. Okay. Okay, now then, I'll read 17 again. It is through my life, it is through my union with Jesus Christ that I enjoy an enthusiasm and confidence in my ministry for God. And so do I again today. And I will not be presumptuous to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me. For many non-Jewish people are coming into faith's obedience by the power of the Spirit of God, which is displayed through mighty signs and amazing wonders, both in word and deed. Starting from Jerusalem, I went from place to place as far as the distant Roman, Roman province of Illyricum, modern-day Croatia. Man, Paul did a lot of traveling for not having cars and planes and stuff back then. Okay, so as far away as Croatia, fully preaching the wonderful message of Christ. It's my honor and constant passion to be a pioneer who preaches where no one has ever heard of the Anointed One, instead of building upon someone else's foundation. As the scriptures say, those who know nothing about him will clearly see him, and those who have not heard will understand. And that's through the power of the Holy Spirit and the apostles who risked their lives to go into countries they knew nothing about to proclaim the word of the Lord. Okay, Paul's intention to visit Rome. My pursuit of this mission has prevented me many times from visiting you, but there's now nothing left to keep me in these regions. So many years I have longed to come and be with you. So on my way to Spain, I hope to visit you as I pass through Rome. And after I have enjoyed fellowship with you for a while, I hope that you would help me financially on my journey. But now I'm on my way to Jerusalem to encourage God's people and minister to them. Was he beheaded in Rome or Jerusalem? Paul, I can't remember. I'm going to go with probably Jerusalem. Okay, I am pleased to inform you that the believers of Macedonia and Greece have made a generous contribution for the poor among the holy believers in Jerusalem. They were thrilled to have an opportunity to give back to the believers in Jerusalem. For indeed, they are gr deeply grateful for them and feel indebted because they brought them the gospel. Since the ethnic multitudes have shared in the spiritual wealth of the Jewish people, it's only right that the non-Jewish people share their material wealth with them. So when I have completed this act of worship and safely delivered the offering to them in Jerusalem, I will set out for Spain and visit you on my way there. I am convinced that when I come to you, I will come packed full and loaded with the blessings of the anointed one. That's why I plead with you because of our union with our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm trying not to cry. <sighs> I'm just so happy that I'm happy again to be reading. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Okay. Verse 30, that's why I plead with you because of our union with our Lord Jesus Christ to be, oh gosh, to be partners with me in your prayers to God. I 
the Lord always refreshes and renews our spirits and our souls. Not like I can really start over. It's 15 minutes in. Okay. I'll just keep going and I'll try not to cry. <sighs> My dear brothers and sisters in the faith, with the love we share in the Holy Spirit, fight alongside me in prayer. Ask the Father to deliver me from the danger I face from the unbelievers in Judea. For I want to make sure that the contribution I carry for Jerusalem will be favorably received by God's holy ones. Then he will send me to you with great joy in the pleasure of God's will, and I will be spiritually refreshed by your fellowship. <laughs> And now may the God who gives us his peace and wholeness be with you all. Yes, Lord, so let it be. I don't even know why I'm crying. I'm just so happy that I'm happy again. Okay. Ah. Romans 16. Paul sends his loving greetings. Now let me introduce to you our dear and beloved, beloved sister in faith, Phoebe, a shining minister of the church in Cancrea or modern day Cancrea. It's about four miles southeast of Corinth in Greece. Okay. I'm sending her with this letter and ask that you shower her with your hospitality when she arrives. Embrace her with honor as is fitting for one who belongs to the Lord and is set apart for him. So provide her whatever she may need, for she's been a great leader and champion for many. I know, for she's been that for even me. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. Okay, give my love to Priscilla and Aquila. Oh, wait, why does it only say... Prissa. It is Priscilla. Okay. My, okay. Give my love to, I'll say Prissa and Aquila, my partners in ministry serving the anointed one, Jesus, for they've risked their own lives to save mine. I'm so thankful for them and not just I, but all the congregations among the non-Jewish people Respect them for their ministry. Also give my loving greetings to all the believers in their house church. And greet Eponidas, who was the first convert to Christ in the Roman province of Asia, for I love him dearly. That is saying a lot. And give my greetings to Miriam, who has toiled and labored extremely hard to benefit you. Make sure that my relatives, Andronicus and Junia, are honored, for they are my fellow captives who bear the distinctive mark of being outstanding and well-known apostles and who were joined into the, anoint uh, into the anointed one before me. Give my regards to Ampliatus, whom I love, for he is joined into the Lord. And give my loving greetings to Urbanus, our partner in ministry, serving the Anointed One, and also to Stachys, whom I love. Don't forget to greet Apelles for me, for he has been tested and found to be approved by the Anointed One. Oh my God. And extend warm greetings to all those of Aristobulo's house, church. 
Give my love to my relative Herodion and also to those of the house church of Narcissus, for they too are joined into the Lord. Now all these names are like Greek sounding when like before we got to Romans, they were all Hebrew words that I was not <laughs> able to pronounce whatsoever. These are a little easier. Okay. Please greet Tryphena and Tryphosa, for they are women who have diligently served the Lord. To Persis, who is much loved and faithful in her ministry for the Lord, I send my greetings. And Rufus, for he is especially chosen by the Lord. And I greet his mother, who was like a mother to me. Isn't that crazy? Like when the Lord comes back, all these people are going to be like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe my name was mentioned in the Bible. You know? Because they don't know this yet. I cannot forget to mention my esteemed friends, Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Petrobus, Hermes, and all the brothers and sisters who greet with them. Give my regards to Philo, Philo, Philologus. Maybe they're not easier. Julia, Nereus, and his sister, and also Olympus, and all the holy believers who meet with them. Greet each other with the holy kiss of God's love. Oh, the note here says, what makes a kiss holy is that it comes from the love of God. All the believers and all the congregations of the Messiah send their greetings to all of you. Paul's final instructions. And now, dear brothers and sisters, I'd like to give one final word of caution. Watch out for those who cause divisions and offenses among you when they antagonize you by speaking of things that are contrary to the teachings that you've received. Don't be caught in their snare for people like this are not truly serving the Lord, our Messiah, but are being driven by their own desires for a following. Or they are slaves of their bellies. And it says the metaphor used here is that they are driven by their desires to pull others into their group and thus divide the church. Because they, I assume, have large egos and think they know more than the Lord. Okay, utilizing their smooth words and well-rehearsed blessings, they seek to deceive the hearts of innocent ones. I'm so happy when I think of you because everyone knows the testimony of your deep commitment of faith. So I want you to become scholars of all that is good and beautiful and stay pure and innocent when it comes to evil or unmixed when it comes to evil. And the God of peace will swiftly pound Satan to a pulp under your feet. And the the Greek word here says to beat up someone to a jelly or a pulp. So if you become scholars of all that is good and beautiful and you stay pure and innocent when it comes to evil, the God of peace will swiftly pound Satan to a pulp under your feet. Thank you, Lord. And the wonderful favor of our Lord Jesus will surround you. My ministry partner, Timothy, sends his loving greetings along with Luke, Jason, and Sosipater, my Jewish kinsman. I, Tertius, am the one transcribing this letter for Paul, and I too send my greetings to all of you as a follower of the Lord. My kind host here in Corinth, Gaius, likewise greets you along with the entire congregation of his house church. 
Also, the city administrator, Erastus, and our brother, Cordus, send their warm greetings. May the grace and favor of our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One, continually rest upon you all. You too. Paul praises God. I give all my praises and glory to the one who has more than enough power to make you strong and keep you steadfast through the promises found in my gospel. That is the proclamation of Jesus, the anointed one. This wonderful news includes the unveiling of the mystery kept secret from the dawn of creation until now. This mystery is understood through the prophecies of the scriptures scripture and by the decree of the eternal God and it is now heard openly by all the nations igniting within them a deep commitment of faith now to God the only source of wisdom be glorious praises for endless ages through Jesus the anointed one amen Paul's letter was transcribed by Tertius in Corinth and sent from Corinth and carried to Rome by Phoebe Okay, that's the end of Romans. Good stuff in here. Definitely touched me. Okay, wait. We are so blessed to be living after Jesus came. Us believers. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for giving us your son and Jesus thank you for willingly choosing to do God's will for you and for all of us to be saved and Lord thank you for reigniting the flame within me today I don't know what happened but I'm so happy that you're with me again, strong. <sighs> okay. Lord, please remind us to be, to treat each other as we would want to be treated. If we all did that, Lord, there would be no war. I know that's not really possible, but it's what we can hope for, Lord. <sighs> Our hope is in you, our faith is in you, Lord, and I pray that you strengthen us more and more each day in hope, faith, and love, but the greatest of these is love, Lord. Please give us compassionate hearts, Lord. Please give us loving hearts and giving hearts, patient hearts, gentle hearts, and just thank you for everything you do for us. Thank you for moving in us, Lord. Thank you for choosing us. Thank you for letting us be your disciples. We love you so much, Jesus. We magnify you and glorify you and God. And Father, please send your son back to us as soon as possible. We miss him. And Lord, please send more harvest gatherers into the fields. We love you so much, and we thank you, and we pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, God bless you guys. I love you.